I'm the oldest of four boys born in five years. And I discovered real early how much fun it was to torture my little brothers. And uh, throughout our history, and I have to admit, all the way until today, we've continued this tradition of torturing each other. I guess they owe me a lot of payback from all of that. So it, it's, it's, uh, the reason I tell you that is because when I was 12 years old, my three brothers and my parents moved into this little place in Spartanburg, South Carolina, Mills Avenue. And behind the house, which pretty much filled up the whole lot, there was a little backyard back there. And uh, behind the backyard, there was a dirt road, a gravel road, perhaps. In my mind, it's a dirt road. And we called it the Bumpities. And there was something weird about the Bumpities. Bumpities. When you would go back there, uh, we had some neighbors. We didn't know them. They were over a fence, but they always spoke French. It's really odd when you're 12 years old and you've never heard anything but English. There were also dogs that used to run around there, but they weren't like the dogs we had. They kind of ignored us, or when we approached them, they ran away. That was really weird, too. Also during that time of my life, uh, my father was working very hard and was pretty much always gone, but my mother was super engaging. She told us stories. I think she started my uh, love for storytelling and for hearing stories. She was great at doing puzzles. She could do games just like she had invented them and knew all the outcomes before we started. So we spent a lot of time with mom, and I developed a severe attraction to women. I know, it's, if you know me, you probably don't believe that. But it's true, and I hold that just like storytelling. I hold that attraction to these days. Nothing like the last story. I just happened to ha make friends with women real easily. Um, so it was no uh, mistake that when they would say, hey, the carpenters are coming, my brothers and I would all be real excited. These were our cousins. They lived in the big city next to Spartanburg, Greenville, South Carolina. So they were very worldly and educated, beautiful, smart, funny I mean, they had it all going on, so when the carpenters were coming, it was almost as good as any other as Christmas morning. That sounds like an exaggeration, but let's, let's face it, uh, we didn't burn Santa up during that process. So when they would, when they would come, I, when we, I knew they were coming, I'd start making plans for how to entertain them, especially Catherine, the older of the three sisters, who was about two years older than I was and always seemed to know what I was thinking. My mother was convinced that we could sleep in the backyard. She even went out and bought a tent, a tent big enough for all seven little children to put their sleeping bags in there, almost half the size of the backyard. So she let us stay out there kind of by ourselves. It got dark. I think Mom and Aunt Betty were drinking wine and talking to each other, watching television, having fun that we weren't there. I decided that I would regale them with a story and that they would be forever indebted to my storytelling skills and my companionship. I had decided it was going to be a ghost story. And I knew from torturing my brothers that this could be a real effective way to get all of their attention and to have them talk about it, maybe even complain the next day. So after it got dark, we sat there a long time. I think it was past our bedtime. I started telling a story about the Bumpity's man. And the Bumpity's man would approach slowly. You could hear his feet on the gravel. And when he would get there, he would murder you in the most horrible of ways, so horrible that I couldn't imagine what that might be at that point. And sure enough, all of them are staring at me. I'm thinking, I am killing this. I'm telling this story. I'm killing it. Finally, at the end, there's a big scream when the bumpity man comes in and grabs the first little kid and mutilates them in front of the rest of us. All of them screamed. They're just like scared to death. I was elated. I scared the crap out of them. 
After that, we kind of climbed in the sleeping bags, and everybody went to sleep except me. I was scared to death. <laughs> the next morning when we woke up, they didn't seem to remember or care that they'd heard the story. I was still absolutely frightened. And that's the story of the Bumpities. Thank <laughs> you.